So the market snapped its seven-day losing streak as the RBI policy decision was on expected lines. The Friday bounce, though, was led by financials. However, the markets lost steam for the third straight week. Today, we put the spotlight on why Indian banks are ahead of the pack and why pharma stocks have been outperforming. Hello and welcome to the Editor's Roundtable. I'm Sonia and today with me I have the Editor's Nimesh, Anuj as well as Nigel. Uh, folks, it was an interesting week but guess what? Next week there are, there are many things to watch out for. I'm watching the midweek holiday very closely. I think that is, that is something to look forward to, right? Oh yes, absolutely. Midweek, uh, end of week, uh, Monday, any day is fine, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a truncated week next week. Yeah, absolutely, the Shara is there. So, yeah. uh, but you know, uh, just a word on the market. Uh, we all have the biases, right? So today it, it all looked so great, uh, uh, and the bank Nifty was up three percent. After all of this, the bank Nifty for the week was still down two point three percent, and the Nifty was still down. But you know, my sense is, and I made this point in the morning as well, that uh, perhaps from the risk reward point of view, the market was uh, bombed out, and uh, it could really give you a nice opportunity if the shorts get stuck. We are at a record level of shorts in Indian market, $1.5 billion of short positions. Uh, I have not seen this kind of shorting at the start of a series. Mm. I think the ingredients were in place for short covering, but Monday morning, we'll again watch for dollar index, the dollar rupee, and see if that rally sustains or not. Oh, absolutely. And I think yeah. uh, there, there are not too many events uh, left, right, in terms of rate yeah, hikes so after, as well. After so, a few yeah. weeks now, Sonia, I'm actually betting for the bulls. Mm. You know, if you, if, you, if you remember, for the last three, four weeks, I've been saying that markets were giving signs of some bit of exuberance, you know, everybody was making money, it was becoming so easy, it was becoming so obvious. Now I think there is fear in the street. Mm. And that's where, you know, when, when for large investors, they, look, they, they, they normally buy in this fear. And only when you buy in fear markets, you make big money. So mm. there is a lot of fear in the market. I'll talk about that in terms of index levels as well. But I think that's, that's what the, the sentiment seems to be. You know, at 18,000, everybody was exuberant. They were looking at 19,000 levels, 19,500 levels by Diwali. And at 16,800, there is a lot of fear in the market now. Okay. So that's where I believe, you know, buying the fear will be a great, great thing to do for investors. And that's what large investors seems to be doing now, because that's what my interaction seems to be sure. when, I, when I spoke to a couple yeah, of large you know, guys. And from the Indian market perspective, you know, I just want to compare two events. Uh, it's like we're running the marathon. Everyone believes that Indian markets, we're going to cover, complete that marathon, we're going to be healthy out there. Mm. And in the near term, it appears like a 100 meter hurdles. Yeah. So everyone's going to be, you know, having those hurdles. But it appears at the end of it, maybe we could complete the 100 uh, meters faster than most others. The outperformance of India could continue, at least that's the sense that you got. And the point that Anush made, the net short position, the last time we had such short positions at yeah. the start of the series was in July. In July. Mm. No one, and nothing to say that it's going to happen again, yeah. but the markets rallied big time in, in July itself. Correct. So yeah. let's see how it plays out this time, but at least it's a good start to the series. Yeah. Okay, good start to the series. Uh, Anuj, last week your focus was on the IT stocks. Today you've moved your focus to banks. Why is that? Oh yes, uh, because you know Indian banks have been outperforming. Let mm. me just go to the big wall and explain uh, what the kind of outperformance that we've seen for the Indian banks uh, ahead of the pack. And uh, you know, in some way, uh, you know, it, it's my lucky day that the bank Nifty did what it did today. So uh, you know, it's topical as well. Uh, now this is what the developed market financials have done, and this is a study by CLSA tracking Bloomberg data over a one-year period. The developed market financials are down 21 percent. And from pre-COVID levels, they're actually down. They're down 6%. And look at emerging market financials. From over a one-year period, they're down 14%. And from pre-COVID level, down about 8%. The bank nifty over a one-year period is flat. But from the pre-COVID levels, it's up about 24%. But I think it's the next plate which would exemplify what I'm you know, trying to explain. Now, just look at some of these stocks. Uh, now, I've taken the big ones. HDFC Bank, which has been the problem point, is down 11% uh, over a one-year period, but from pre-COVID up 16%. Uh, but look at the two big ones, the two go-to stocks. Uh, they keep coming back, of course, in my chatter as well, ICICI Bank and State Bank of India. Look at one-year move, 19%, 23%, and look at the move from pre-COVID level, 64% and 71%. Look at US banks, they have collapsed. JP Morgan and Citibank are down about 35 to 40%. The only other bank which comes close to Indian banks is DBS, which is up 13% over a one-year period, and from the pre-COVID level, it's up about 31%. Uh, now, what is the biggest reason for this, according to CLSA? And this is where, uh, you know, uh, the corporate slippages comes into picture. At the peak of FY18 corporate slippages, Access Bank was at 15.8%. It's come down to 0.9. ICICI from 9% to 0.7, and SBI from 7.3% to 0.2%. This was the reason these three stocks were underperforming back in FY18, and this is the reason these stocks have now started 
to outperform. Not just that, the corporate India has been deleveraging. Again, this is CLSA data. Look at corporate credit. Of course, the overall credit has gone up because the economy is uh, getting bigger. But as a percentage of corporate credit and as a percentage of, uh, 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 sorry, total credit and as a percentage of GDP, they've come down from 78% to 69% and from 69% to 55%. So clearly, that's a big positive for the banks. Uh, what is the provision coverage ratio? It's very high for the sector. Uh, this is average of uh, PCR of ICICI, Axis, and SBI. I take these three stocks because these three really, uh, you know, account for the for, for, for bulk of the corporate credit. Uh, in that, uh, look at where the number was in FY18, 48.4%, and look at how it's moved up to 76%. Basically, the point here is that banks are healthy, and that's why this rally. The banks were not healthy in FY18, and all through the painful period, these banks have now become healthy. The next graphic, I think, is astonishing. Just look at how the credit cost has moved for the three outperformers versus the other three. Let's move to the next graphic. Uh, uh, ICICI Bank, uh, Axis, and SBI, the, the credit cost, that, that next graphic would come up for you now. And uh, there it's uh, come off quite a bit. Uh, from 3.69%, it's come down to 0.8% for ICICI, Axis, and SBI, while for Kotak, HDFC Bank, uh, it's been pretty stable. Uh, now look at uh, the capital levels for most of them, the CET levels. Uh, they're comfortable. Most of them are sitting comfortable, except for Axis Bank, which might need to raise some capital after the Citibank deal. Uh, but uh, this is where as well, uh, you know, uh, the issue here is that they, they don't need to go for large capital raise, and that's why that number really stands out. Uh, now let's look at the sector valuations, current valuations versus average valuations. I think that is the most important point. Uh, uh, the uh, banking sector is trading at 9% discount compared to its 10-year average. 10-year average is something that you look at. Uh, so uh, uh, that's something to, to watch out for. And that's why I think uh, these, these banks have been uh, doing rather well. Uh, but Nimesh, what did you pick up from the dealing rooms? So, you know, you rightly pointed out about the, the, the valuations, the reason for banks to do well. And the fact is, you know, we're starting this series uh, with, the, with the fact that the bank nifty last series was down 10%. This was the most overweight sector, most loved sector for most of the investors. And that's why we saw a big fall because, you know, there was so much of overpositioning. That seems to be out now. You know, a lot of the fraud or the retail, so-called retail participation in, in the banks is, seems to be out after the 10% fall. And many stocks have now reached very crucial support levels. So that's something one needs to watch out as far as the banks are concerned. Overall, from a, from a market point of view, as I said, you know, uh, one needs to just buy the fear now because there is so much of fear in the market. You know, uh, this week, uh, when I was talking to some large investors, traders, there was, there was so much of scare now that people are talking about 14,000 levels, 15,000 levels in the Nifty. That was not the case three weeks back. When we were closing 18,000, people were talking about 19,000, 19,500 by Diwali or by December. So there has been a big shift in sentiment uh, in, the last one, in the last one week, 10 days itself, you know, with the kind of fall we've seen in the Indian market. So sentiment is clearly on the other side now, which is where I believe market may surprise on the upside. And even from a technical point of view, you know, there are a lot of indicator, indicators suggesting that maybe we'll have a, a, a sharp technical pullback rally, not only for the Indian markets, for the global markets as well. You know, that's where, uh, you know, as, as, as Nigel pointed out, the net sh nifty short positions of FIS is the highest. And we saw what happened when it, when it was last in July and we saw a big rally. So a lot of technical indicators are suggesting a big pullback for, for global markets as for the Indian market. So that's something to watch out. Historically, if you look at the October series, for India, it's been a good series. You know, normally we end on the, on the positive side. The last three years have been historically been the trend that, you know, October seems to be a positive series for Indian markets. So that, again, seems to be suggesting that there could be a bit of a, a pullback rally. You know, the, the most important thing is, uh, while everybody's talking about risk, and now it's more prominent because markets have fallen and we're catching up with the global underperformance, my sense is the key risk is the unknown unknown. You know, what I mean is uh, the known factors like rate hikes, inflation, you know, the, the U.S. Uh, growth data, all seems to be known factors now. Normally, markets don't react very heavily on the known risk. Only if there is an unknown, unknown risk, markets can fall very sharply from, from here on. So that is something. Maybe it will come from China. Maybe it can come from Europe. The way things are shaping up in Europe, it can give a big nasty surprise going forward, which is not priced in. Otherwise, the rate hikes, the growth, that seems to be priced in. It's a known risk. So watch out for unknown, unknown risk for the markets to fall sharply from here on. That's the overall message. I'm, I'm getting in. I just want to, you know, just uh, toss it to an interesting bite or, or, a, or a quote played from Alexander Redman of CLSA. You know, he's put out a note today morning. He's saying that the U.S. tactical indicators are now flashing green for the near-term equity bounce. <coughs> uh, the last when they saw these kind of bearish levels in the in the S&P, 
uh, and from there, uh, to in two consecutive months, the S&P has rallied 17 percent. That's the kind of powerful you can see a, a pullback rally or a short-term bounce-back rallies, not only in the global markets, but for the Indian markets as well. So do keep into account that A, we could see a tactical pullback, and the fact that there is so much of fear now looks like market can surprise on the, on, on the upside because nobody is anticipating a, a, a big rally from here on. So these are the few things to watch out for. All right, uh, you know, guys, I'm looking at the pharma index and the pharma stocks, the question is, is that the place to hide? And I'll tell you why. Because for the past week, everyone's talking about the Nifty being under pressure. Everyone's talking about, uh, you know, how the markets were in a bit of a pain point. But the pharma index for the past week, it was up close to 3% while the Nifty was down a percent. And for this month itself as well, it's been a relative outperformer. So that's why that index is on my radar. In fact, it's been a big underperformer though. If you're looking at it from 2015 till date, the Nifty has closed have double, the farmer index has done absolutely nothing. Now the pharma stocks as a percentage, the weightage on the Nifty, but it was closer to around 7 to around 8% in 2015 from where things started going wrong. As for the last month, it's down to closer to around half of that, closer to around 3.6% or thereabouts. The domestic mutual fund as well, the aggregate data that comes in there, the exposure has come down to the lowest we have seen in the last 30 months or so. So that's telling you that the domestic mutual funds as well, the exposure is reasonably lower. Now, what went wrong from 2015 itself? You had price erosion, you had buyer consolidation in the US markets as well, and regulatory overhangs from the US FDA as well as in the domestic markets as well. But why could pharma be a potential good bet from year on? Potential with a question mark. Let's pull up the point number one first. The big fear for the street is discretionary spends getting pulled back. Well, pharma is not discretionary in nature, right? It's more or less inelastic demand that drives it. So that's point number one. The other big fear is the rupee depreciation. Well, that could be good for them for some of these large generic companies because 30 to 40 percent of their money comes in in the, the dollar. So they'll in fact gain. It's on the margin positive and margins could expand for the second half of the year. API prices have cooled down, supply chain issues as well have uh, been getting ironed out. So second half of the year, the street is building in some bit of, of gross margin expansion. Point number four is US price erosion. Last few years, there's been a big erosion out there. Now the street believes that maybe we're getting to a bottoming out of that. And on the domestic front, the essential medicines, well, they have got a price revision. So that's what could support some part of their portfolio as well. Put these five points together, maybe there could be a bullish argument for pharma that could be built out from here on. In terms of stocks and their valuations, well, I'll leave you with this uh, plate. Cipla as well as Sun Pharma, they're trading at valuations close to around the 52-week highs because obviously the stock's at 52-week highs. But quite a few of these stocks, well, their valuation has come off considerably as of now in comparison to what they were trading at at their 52-week highs. But uh, Sonia, coming back to you, what are you tracking? What are the events to watch in the coming week? Okay, so this week is done, right? But there are many events to watch in the week to come that we're looking at. Uh, auto sales, the market will react to those numbers. And this time, the festive demand has been good. So across the board, whether it's passenger vehicles, commercial vehicles, the demand has been solid. In fact, for most passenger vehicles like Maruti and m, &M there'll be an over 100% growth on a year-on-year -year basis. Apart from that, you have uh, you know names like Ashok Leyland, Tata Motors, infrastructure activity is back, truck demand is back, and that will show through in the numbers as well. Uh, the only sore pocket will be two-wheelers because of the exports which have been sulking. But let's move on to the other big trigger, which is the telecom stocks definitely will react to Prime Minister Modi uh, launching 5G services in India on the 1st of October. Uh, the two big questions that we're asking, will 5G trigger another leg of consolidation in the Indian telecom sector? And will 5G launch drive another increase in the average revenue per user? We already saw a big boost to names like Bharti in the week gone by. Uh, the third thing I'm watching out for is the gas price hike. From the 1st of October, there's a 100% hike in APM gas prices that's expected. Remember, currently the gas prices are at $6.1 per MMBTU. But there's a caveat here. The government had appointed a new panel to review gas prices last month. And the government panel was given time till the end of September to finalize this report. Now, sources have told CNBC TV18 that they have not been able to do justice to the issue of gas prices just yet. So it could be a status quo as far as the gas price hike is concerned. So these are the three big events to watch out for that the street will react to next week. But the biggest one for me definitely is the midweek holiday still. Let's do one thing. Let's take a quick commercial break. But on the other side of the break, we will discuss the market fundamentals. I have with me Rahul Arora of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities who will be with us on the Editor's Roundtable in just about 4-5 minutes from now. Stay tuned.